Hello and welcome back to TNN's coverage of the world's nine best fantasy football players league. I'm your host and this is what we have for you this week. Week 9 brought some shocking results as interdivision play continued. Both divisions now have a new team on top, with Team M. Vanek and McKissma Balls taking the top spot in their respective divisions. Last week, we had a tie between the Crewmen and the Imposters 3-3. Three and three. Currently, the Crewmen lead interdivision play with a 14-10 and 10 record. TNN reached out to the two new division leaders to see how they are approaching the playoffs. Here is what they had to say. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nooch, uh, the owner, director, overseer of new league leader, McKissma Balls. Um, after what really was a crazy week, the enigmatic uh, Team M. Vanek knocking off the court, um, really reforming our justice system last week, um, knocking him into first for no reason. Team M. Vanek really does not have any reason to be in first, and I'll say that till the end of my days. Um, but also putting me into first, and I um, could not be more grateful to Team M. Vanek for, for being bad at tanking, but um, I also just want to point out that um, McKiss My Balls is not only what uh, I want you all to do for the rest of the season, but um, really has been what you, you've been doing for uh, the last seven weeks. Uh, the team's been hot. Uh, literally, we have the flame under our name for the first time in league history, and as far as I know, in recorded sleeper history, we have the flame under our name. So um, I do like the state of the team. We are gelling in the locker room. We have a lot of, uh, you know, just, just dude stuff going on in the locker room, and I, I'm really happy to see it every time I walk in. And, um, you know, Saquon's coming back uh, hopefully next week. Um, he's, he's doing great on his recovery path, and we, we are, are happy. We are um, content with where the rest of the season is going. So um, as far as I know, all of you can McKiss my balls for the rest of the season, and I'll see you all in the playoffs. And now, here is Danny Football with his picks for Week 10. Hey, what's up, guys? World's nine best fantasy football players expert, Danny Football here, back with another week of expert predictions. Look, the picks have not been going that well for me lately. Something has got to be interfering with my expert instincts. I went three and three last week, bringing my total on the year to 33 and 21. My guest Will had a nice week at four and two, beating the expert and securing himself a return spot on the show. But now, it's a new week, a new guest, and a new chance to beat the expert. So guests, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, sad owner of the Mental Brick Walls, Brett here. I uh, got my Justin Fields jersey on after the horrific rep show that I had to uh, witness last night. Um, and don't really want to think very much about fantasy football after my team's performance over the last couple of weeks. I do have one question, though, for the expert, and that is, at this point, are you concerned that you are going to run out of slots for all the people you are going to have to bring back this year? Uh, no, 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 not, <laughs> not yet. Okay. We, we, we had four last year, and I'm at three right now, so I got, I got four more guests to, uh, to dismiss over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Ex excited we'll to see it. Ex excited to see down the stretch run here. Well, we'll we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Time time to come come through in the home stretch. Yeah, it's pressure time. All right. First up, we have McKiss Mavals and Team M Vanek. McKiss currently favored in this one at eighty five percent. Brett, who do you like in this one? So I got my notes all down here, um, and a common theme this week I think is that there are good games and horrific games. Uh, this is one of the good games. Uh, Team M. Vanek, as of Tuesday, hadn't really set his uh, lineup. Um, and one thing that I noted is that uh, he needs DeAndre Hopkins to be back healthy in this game. Um, and just the Cardinals in, in general, with uh, Chase Edmonds going down last week, got to love James Conner's ability to put up a lot of points. Yeah. Um, from a kiss, uh, some of the defense, some buys, some injuries could be a problem, but... 
Jonathan Taylor has just been an absolute machine. Puts up 30 points a week, and Julia then makes fun of me for not having Jonathan Taylor on my team. She actually doesn't do that, but I get sad when I see her team just win by 40 every week and I lose in every single league. Um, and Josh Allen, looking for a huge bounce back, gets to play the Jets. Those two might combine for 60 or 70 points. And as the old saying goes, nobody circles the wagons like McKiss my balls. I like McKiss my balls this week over M. Vanek, but two very competitive teams. I like both of their teams. Yeah, I think I think that's a good pick. This this is one that very easily could have been the marquee matchup this week. You get two division leaders going against each other here. Some experts might say two fraudulent division leaders. Both of these teams have been the beneficiaries of literally no points being scored against them. If if teams played against every other team every week, Team Vanek would easily very, very easily be in the bottom quarter of this league. Just So just keep that in mind while they tout how good their team is at the top of the Impostors division. Both of these teams have had the second lowest points scored against. Uh, I'd also just like to point out how ridiculous it was that James Conner put up 36 points last week for Team Vanek. Don't know how that happens. Um... I don't love it. As an expert, don't love it. I, I'm expecting this one to be pretty close. Like I said, these two teams, they they don't get points scored against them. I, I'm saying it's going to be like 170 to 165, but I'm going to give the edge to McKiss in this one. Next up, we have 2 Infinity and Beyond versus Ham and Throw. Ham and Throw favored at a 64% chance to win. Fans of the show will know that I have been banging the drum all year on Ham and Throw being a boomer bust team. And they proved me right yet again last week, putting up an absolutely pitiful showing, not even getting 120 points. To Infinity, also down pretty bad after suffering what everyone in the league has been dreading all year, facing off against undefeated, never lost. You never want to lose to a team that's on the bottom. Important storyline to watch here. Will 2Infinity be able to rally to avenge Brian Burns and beat down confirmed scumbag Mac Jones? Mac Jones, certainly not a man of character. And honestly, the commissioner should consider punishing any team that continues to keep him on their roster. I don't pick teams with low character. I'm going with 2Infinity. Yeah, as uh, as fans of our league in general will know, I am low on Ham and Throw's team. Um, however, I looked at the the matchup this week and and saw that he has some interesting pieces. Um, quite the dynamic with Dalvin Cook and Austin Eckler playing in the same game. I believe in Los Angeles as well. I guess it doesn't really matter. They're going to be on turf and indoors, fast turf. The running backs can get going. Um, and he's got both Tom Brady and Mike Evans going up against the footballs over in Washington. Um, it was tough to see Jacob lose last week. Yeah. Um, I, he, he sent a text and I was not sure if he was kidding or not, um, asking me to pray that, uh, undefeated never lost would not get another point, uh, after the first half of Monday night football. So I looked on Sleeper and saw that Undefeated had like four players playing and that it, I think the app had it as 100%, even though he was still losing. So I was confused by that. Um, and this is a big one for him, I think. He sits at five and four right now, I believe. A, a win here would put him in the driver's seat for making the playoffs. And you don't want to lose to a Hammond throw, throw team that is sitting currently under 500. Um, I've been low on Hammond throw. I've been low on the Patriots. I've been low on New England, the city of Boston. However, I think much like his beloved Patriots, Visconti will see Hammond throw to move closer to 500, but they still have no chance at winning a championship. All right, moving on. We have Team Big Chungus 22 versus Blinded by the Tight End. Big Chungus favored 91%. What are your thoughts on this one? 
Okay, looking at what I have written down from earlier. Um, oh, yeah, uh, Tom's team does not have running backs. Like, even worse than when the mental brick walls had to start the Atlanta Falcons backfield for pretty much up until last week. The Chungus team, not a huge fan of it. This is one of the games that falls into the really who cares about it, even though both of the records are pretty good. I don't see either of these teams having a chance of winning the championship. But, you know, uh, fuck it. Tyreek's down there somewhere. Uh, take the under in this game, but Chungus will want a close one. Yeah, I, I like that pick. I th- This is one that, that could be interesting. They're both coming in with pretty similar records. Both really need a win. Feel good about their playoff chances. Obviously, blinded by the tight ends, got that Derrick Henry injury looming large. And Christian McCaffrey's back, so Chuba Hubbard, basically worthless. Um, if James Robinson's out, their running back situation is going to be actually garbage this upcoming week. Big Chungus, on the other hand. Um, I'm intrigued to see where Odell ends up. I'll say that. They, they don't really need any more wide receiver help, but he, he could be a nice boost or maybe just someone to trade away come the deadline. I also genuinely don't know who the Chungus's are going to run out there at tight end. So, could be an interesting thing to watch out for. Look, winding by the tight end is riddled with problems right now. And last week, I predicted that they'd be in for a rough rest of the season. Experts cannot waver in their predictions from week to week. And for that reason, I don't like it, but I'm going to do it. This is only the second time this year I've picked against them. I'm going with the Chunguses. Next, we have the Pumper McNichols versus the Mental Brick Walls. Pumper McNichols favored here at 58% chance to win. Mental Brick Walls, pretty bad. Pumper McNichols, cursed and pretty bad. There really isn't a lot of good things to say in this matchup, but luckily for them, one of these teams has to win. Unless there is a tie. I, I would love to see a tie as, as an expert. For the Brick Walls, they, they got Kittle back. He's a big addition for any team. Cordell Patterson, also probably the biggest surprise of the fantasy season. Watching Matt Nagy obsess over this man with absolutely no results, only for him to go off in Atlanta has been painful, to say the least. Pumper McNichols, they've had a tough going. For their team namesake, who looks like he might be losing his position to ancient Adrian Peterson. They're also going to be without former team namesake T. Higgins this week, who's on a bye. Not a lot of leadership at the top, but when it comes down to it, Chris McCaffrey's back. This mental brick walls team just is not built to win. I'm going with the Pumper McNichols. I have a lot that I want to say. I, I don't want to keep it too long. No, please, go off, go off. I, I'm wearing the Fields jersey. I'm a sick person. I I was looking at my schedule for the rest of the year for the brick walls and was thinking, what is the most painful thing, which would be me making the playoffs and getting another mediocre draft pick. I had easily the worst first-round draft pick of last year's draft. I, I don't think that's in in any debate. Yeah. I essentially am the Ryan Pace of this league. I should be fired. It's funny that I have um, gotten lucky with Cordero Patterson because he moved off the Bears. I still have Tariq Cohen, I believe, on my roster. I don't know. When he comes back, I'll probably be sick enough to play him because I'll think that Matt Nagy's going to design some sort of gadget play for him. My team is so bad. The defense is aging. Another comparison. There we go to the Bears. There is absolutely no hope. I, I need, like, the first overall pick, but I guarantee I win, like, one or two games down the stretch. Pick fifth. Horrible rookie class, it appears, coming in. Tibby side, his team isn't good either. He has McCaffrey back, which is good and looked pretty healthy on Sunday. Um, but unfortunately for him, the Chiefs have decided that Kelsey doesn't need to get the ball anymore and we'll just throw to Tyreek 25 times and Kelsey will have, like, three targets. And the McNichol situation doesn't seem to be good with Adrian Peterson somehow getting red zone carries. I guess the Pumper McNichols will win. I don't think either team can ever be considered a winner. I, I think that I have the least amount of points in the league by like 200. 
Like, I, I was thinking, well, if I won a couple in a row, what could happen? I would also have to win all of them by 100 points because I'm, like, 400 points below the teams that are, like, at 500. The Pumper McNichols will win this game, and the team name will probably change by the end of the year as he is rendered completely obsolete. So, I think we've talked way too much about this game. It is a sad state of affairs for the brick walls. I'm at a loss I, for words. I'm at a loss for words. I like it. The The rare pick against your own team. I respect that. Yeah, I mean, th- there we go. We want another Bears comparison. I can't stand for my players. Nagy can't stand up for his players. It's it's sad. It's very sad. I would like to apologize to all, all of the other owners of this league. I will be better. Probably not, but I will maybe try to be better. There we go. Give, give you three years. Next up, we have Court is now in session, taking on Bonk, go to Mahorny Jail. Court favored 73%. Who do you like here? Yeah, I think that uh, the Court is going to pull this one out. Um, I love the Steelers matchup with with the Lions. Um, if the Court had any integrity, they wouldn't play. Noted criminal Aaron Rodgers, if he is uh, indeed allowed to play, uh, and cause a super spreader event with whoever the Packers are playing this week. From Bonk's uh, point of view, they have a, a big Monday night with both Ayuk and, and Cup playing. Um, but when I was looking to make this pick, it really came down to Bonk needs Mahomes to play well, and I actually think the Chiefs are kind of in trouble, and Mahomes will turn the ball over and score like 16 to 18 points. It's a good game. It's an interesting game. I think that it's a game where Court can really cement themselves as the favorites to win the league this year. Um, and I th- and I think they pull this one out. Yeah, I like that pick. This is, uh, you know, we got a little roommate battle here in Yorkville. Another one that had some marquee matchup potential, came up just short. Will Joe and the commissioner ever move into an apartment? Well, I don't know. But the battle to assert roommate dominance starts right here here court they had a tough loss last week both times they've scored under 200 points this year they've lost but they have david montgomery back should factor into their lineup going forward bonk had a really nice week last week putting up about 240 their defense absolutely going off you're gonna have to lean on the defense again this week though with their only good running back joe mixon on a bye and one of their best wide receivers brandon cooks also on a buy, really valuable player. Um, any team that does not have him in their starting lineup, surely missing out. I think the court is going to bounce back and make a strong case in this roommate dispute. I'm going with the court in this one. Finally, we have our marquee matchup of the week, undefeated, never lost, versus the Tex Arcana Bandits. Undefeated, never lost, favored at 89% in this one. This is the rematch from last year's Toilet Bowl. Two teams under the hype video curse. It would be wrong not to have this as the marquee matchup this week. Fans of the show will know that I am high on the Bandits. And if there was ever a week for them to break their seven-week losing streak curse, it would be against the team that was dealing with its own curse last year. But this undefeated, never lost team is on a two-game win streak coming into this one. Barring a miracle, neither of these teams is making the playoffs, but the loser is all but certain to miss the playoffs. I don't see any team getting in with eight losses. Bandit's team is cursed, like pretty bad, and I am kindly requesting that they do not pick up any Bears players so that they are not subjected to the Mike White curse. I can't in good conscience pick the Bandits right now, and for that reason, I'm going with Undefeated Never Lost. I gotta say, I like that pick, and you know, when I was doing my research before we decided that we were gonna, gonna discuss what we thought was gonna happen this week, my plan for this was to say, do we actually have to talk about this? And then I learned that it was the marquee game of the week, I only have one note for the Bandits, and it's two words. Mike White. I don't really know what happened to their team. 
it's 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 a sad state of affairs. Yeah. You, you think that they could be one of the premier franchises in this league. What Grayson could bring to the table with a good team would be very exciting and, and something that I hope we get to see moving forward. But in good conscience, I, I really don't think that I can pick them. Um, on the other side, undefeated, never lost. <laughs> Matt Ryan looks better, I guess. Um and and Najee Harris gets to play the Lions, and maybe the Steelers will pull away one time and they could actually run the ball in the second half. Uh, his defense looks like it's poised for a decent week, and for that reason, I'll pick his team, but we are all losers for having listened to about two minutes of discussion of this game. All right, well, Brett, thank you so much for being I, on I do show. have one more thing, actually. Oh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, please. Are we running back the punishment from last year? I, I think that... It almost needs to be a thing. You know, I uh, I don't know if I have access to anything here in the house, but I I will do my best to make that work. If uh, if you want to agree to that, okay, I'll, I'll I'll make sure that for every every loss that um, I'll I'll take a punishment shot. I will record my my uh, thoughts on on what went wrong which I'm sure is going to be everything. I'm sure my team will win by like a half point, like 99 and a half to 99. I'll move towards a worse draft pick. My team won't get any better. And then I'm going to have to create a sad video where I record myself. So you have all that to look forward to. Thank you for having me on though. It's a lot of good content coming up there. Yeah, get Brett, th- thanks, thanks for being on. Wishing you all the best of luck with your picks. Of course, not as good as me. Can't beat the expert. Looking forward so. to uh, to that video coming forward, and uh, thanks for being on again. Thank you very much. And thank you, Danny Football and guest Brett, for those great picks. That's all we have for you this time. Be sure to come back next week to see how things shook out. I'm your host, and this has been TNF. <laughs>